First, I want to join in uh, applauding and thanking Chairman Miller for his tremendous leadership on this issue. I want to thank uh, and recognize all of the, the people that are here today, various uh, facets of the education uh, um, industry or uh, network, as well as many disability groups. We've all joined together on this legislation to ensure the health, safety, and well-being of our children in school. And there are already uh, federal guidelines in place, as Chairman Miller mentioned, against the inappropriate use of seclusion and restraint against children through the Children's Health Act, but it only applies to hospitals and juvenile facilities, and it's not been applied to schools. So what we're proposing today is to put that protection in place, that same protection in place, where children spend most of their time at school. As a parent, and like any parent, when I send my son to school, Cole, uh, my husband Brian and I send him with the expectation that he's going to be safe. And we entrust him to his teachers and the principals and the aides. And we know that the school personnel have done an outstanding job to help him and keep him safe. Yet we know that this has not been the case for other children, especially among the children with disabilities, who are the most vulnerable and in need of the most protection. And I actually am a mom of a son with disabilities too, so this is close to my heart. In May, General Accounting Office released a study highlighting the prevalence of seclusion and restraint in our schools, and I think we were all shocked with the findings. We've also heard numerous personal examples from families, and we're gonna hear more today. GAO found the lack of guidance to school districts and to teachers only frustrated the situation. And as I've looked into it myself, I've, I've come to the same conclusion that we really need more guidance to our teachers and our schools. A difficult situation arises and a teacher or a principal just don't know how, what to do. The bill we're introducing today proposes guidelines to advise school districts on the best practices by, by outlining those minimum standards that states must adopt. In addition, the bill gives schools the resources they need to ensure that their personnel handle situations in the most positive manner possible. Finally, the bill requires schools to notify parents about what's happening to their child so parents can make informed decisions. These are actions that must involve the family. I look forward to working with Chairman Miller and everyone that's been involved to improve the safety of all who are at our schools.